Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Optimize Your Body with Martin Silva. Today is a bit of a different one. I have my mum on the show because I'm over here in Australia. She came over to visit me and here she is. How are you doing, mum? I'm fine, thank you. You enjoying uh, Sydney life? I am, but I'm, I'm waiting for it to get hotter. Yes, you've had some bad luck. It's gone cold all of a sudden. Literally, the days you got here, cold and windy which doesn't help with your illness. Um, you feel the cold quite a lot, don't you, with the uh, autoimmune disease you have? Yes, I do. Um, it's called systemic sclerosis. Yes, well done for the pronouncing that. And um, 99% of people with this condition will also have Raynaud's, which, as a lot of people know, Raynaud's is definitely affected by the cold. Yeah, and Raynard's is quite common. I actually have Raynard's myself, I think, don't I? Where it's just the circulation and you get like cold fingers and you feel the cold quite a lot, like a little bitch. I feel the cold like a little bitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, not anymore though because I've been having cold showers. Anyway, that's conditioned me for the cold weather, so I don't feel that shit anymore, but I still get white fingers. Anyway, the reason I've got my mum here on episode 14 is because I've learned a lot from her in terms of her positive attitude through thick and thin, in the face of, you know, hard times, she always manages to come through. And, yeah, the deter- her determination is definitely something which has pushed me forward um, in my in my career with health and fitness and competitions and just my general mindset. But, yeah, where did you get the determination from, man? Because you have this il- Can you tell the listeners a little bit more about your illness? Because I wanted them to know. Um, but I had Raynaud's for years, years and years. And then when I was pregnant with my daughter, who was 23, so she's seven years younger than Martin, I got an infection in one of my fingers and was diagnosed with a condition called systemic sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease of the connective tissue. So it can affect every part of your body. Um, obviously everything is tissue, so it makes the tissue go quite hard. Um, I've lost my a couple of my fingers, have been gangrenous. Um, my heart has been affected. So yeah, you can't see her fingers right now, but like she doesn't really, um, she's not really one to like whine about it and go into too much detail about her hands. Your hands are deformed, let's face it. Yeah, yeah. And, and infection. Explain, like, because they can't see your hands yet. So just like, I'm looking um, at them now. If you ever remember older people with rheumatoid arthritis and their fingers are bent over, it looks very similar to that. Only you can see, like, the, the fingers are not straight. They're, um, there's bits missing off them. In fact, they're quite deformed. But just go and ask me to go and get a few pints of beer this or pick anything up because I can't carry them. <laughs> yeah, but they're they're like so Cold. you can imagine a picture a picture. Of, I'll have to put them on my Instagram the uh, fingers so you can see. Um, the finger our fingers are, if you extend you straighten your fingers out ours are straight. Hers the nerves have been taken out right so they're completely bent and crooked right so they're like on a. The nerves are not taken out. All oh, right. They're fused. They're fused in that position okay. because of infection. So imagine you clench your fist, right, folks? Imagine you're clenching your fist. Her hands are pretty much not far off a full clenched fist all the time um, due to her illness. So that was the, one of the first symptoms of one day. You had uh, cold, like white fingers with the circulation, and then you had an infection. It wouldn't heal. Yeah, because the immune system attacks itself, right? Yeah. That's what. Yeah. yeah, so with an autoimmune disease, with my mother's, um, you know, my mother's specifically, the immune system attacks itself. So, um, so yeah, it affects pretty much everything. And you had, um, what are those bags called? The, uh, the poo bag? <laughs> a stoma, a elostomy. I've had an elostomy now for two years. But this, you must remember, this is going 23 and in, three years into the condition. And I had the elostomy bag 21 years into the condition. And I also get fed through um, a central line. Was it, I think they call it a Broviac or a Hickman line. Hickman line, line yeah. Which goes into the heart. And I get fed through um, a tube which is a, a fluid which gives me all my nutrients I need. I'm on that three nights a week. And why is that? And that's because of the esophagitis. Yeah, because I can't, I can't really eat a lot of foods and a lot of substance foods because I can't swallow them because, like I said, the con- connective tissue goes tight and it tightens around your throat and your esophagus. So you, can't, you haven't got that 
where a normal person eating, it will propel the food down into the gut, where mine doesn't, it just stops. And, so uh, what is it, because the connective tissue, like obviously being a trainer and with the knowledge I have, all, all I know is the connective tissue is like the ligaments, the tendons, um, the soft tissue, you know, the cartilage, that's all the connective tissue, right? Yeah. Everything so you have connected. all that, I didn't even know, yeah, everything, I know that, well, I don't know that. I do, I do now. That but makes sense, by, actually. Everything by the way, I must <laughs> say, I am not medically trained. All I know is my own condition. People with this condition will suffer in and will present in a various, you know, a various ways when none of us are the same. And I'm just speaking from my personal experience with the condition. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say then about uh, yeah. I wanted to, on that note. Wanted to say that I also. Uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not even a nutritionist. Just wanted to put that one out there, actually, because uh, sometimes I kind of forget to mention the fact that yeah, I'm not. You know, I haven't got all these qualifications as long as my arm, um, but I do know about health, fitness, nutrition. Just put that one out there, folks. Just so you know, I'm not a doctor. Um, anyway, I had a, a few questions for you, mum. Let's let's go more into like my upbringing and stuff because uh, I'd just like to share with the audience, um, you know, with the background I've had and stuff like that. So. What was it? What was it like, man? When we were younger. We weren't particularly rich, were we? But we weren't rich. But hey, oh, I did work. I worked for. I was a lorry driver for years. Believe it or not, class one. Um, yeah, up until Martin was seven, everything was fine. I just got a bit cold now and again. And I remember taking Martin to a, a gym when he was in a push chair, and I was on a treadmill. Is that the time you fell off the treadmill? Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> We were messing around a bit. <laughs> I remember that. I remember, like, I was in stitches, wasn't I? Like, I, remember, I can actually remember that. You fell off a treadmill. There we are. Anyway, <laughs> you, you forgot about that part that you were going to mention, have you? <laughs> I introduced Martin to the gym early days. Seven years old, see, uh-huh. folks. That's my secret. Before seven, you were in a push chair, Martin. You were about two, oh, okay. two and a half. There we go. Two and a half. So, that wasn't, um, that wasn't was when young. you fell off the treadmill, that, No, was I it? fell off another time when ah, she got older. Okay. And I was uh, pretty fit. I liked to run, uh, um, you know, a few few laps around the wreck. Um, around yeah, the park, yeah. Swim. I was, uh, I was quite fit. I was like walking, hill walking was my thing. Yeah. But how about the struggle? Because I do remember, you know, you, you struggled, you know. Let's obviously, just tell a bit more about your background in terms of your upbringing and stuff anyway. Because the reason she's so resilient and stuff like that is, you know, obviously your upbringing wasn't uh, particularly sunshine and rainbows. Was well, it? brought up in care from the age of two, left at 16 to fend for myself, then was taken in again at 16 by Dr. Bernardo's and then at 17, nearly 18, into bed sits and, yeah, yeah. fended for myself until I had marked in 25, but I, I was okay. I, I worked, I, I looked after myself, but there was just me. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah then. So that's obviously your your determination has uh, helped you raise two kids for sure, Mum. Um, yeah, and just me being you've always you know like the level I'm at now in terms of you know where I've taken my fitness and stuff like that, and you know got to the pro level as a bodybuilder, all that kind of stuff. You've always pushed me to play sports. I mean, I remember even when I was really young, pushing me to play <laughs> rugby. Remember that time? You might want to tell him. Uh, I, was, I was like uh, crying and stuff one night. It was so cool. Come on, come on, Andres. <laughs> Age five, in a field, and I'm stood on the sidelines, and he's just looking at me as if to say, Mum, I don't want to do this. It's cold. It's raining. Why are you doing this to me? I think at five, he, he didn't enjoy it that much, so we changed clubs, and I think after that, he um, started to enjoy it a bit more. But yeah, she's always push me like to play sports push me like you can't deny that because I remember I didn't even want to play rugby at one point taekwondo at five taekwondo well. karate kickboxing like you name it and I've done every sport but rugby I pursued up until the age of about 23 24 and I loved rugby you know I really enjoyed that and then soccer as well like everything wasn't it you know so that that definitely play is a huge uh, contributor to uh, the way you know obviously I started lifting weights when I was like 14 15 and it's something I've always been accustomed to and always been used to doing is being fit, being active and competitive. That's the word I'm looking for. Very, very competitive due to all the sports I played. So that has definitely propelled me forward when it comes to um, building a career and, you know, and getting to the professional level as a, as a, um, as a fitness model. So I want to thank you for that, Mum. Anyway, 
how can we benefit the listeners today, man? Right. So the, the, the point in this podcast, I guess, is because uh, I'm running out of ideas. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I'm sat here interviewing my mother. You know what I'm <laughs> no, he's got a new Apple Mac. Yeah. And he's testing it out with me. Testing okay. it out. It might sound a bit weird because the, I couldn't connect the mic. So, because you need an adapter. So, we're just talking into the laptop right now. So, apologies if you can't understand it. But, yeah, um, just the mindset, man, because you do a lot of voluntary work. You, you know, the expert patient program. Do you want to tell them more about that? Just because giving, I keep saying to you guys, I've only started doing it a little bit lately. I've done nothing in terms of giving. But it's very important for your state of mind, like Gabbard. It makes you feel good. Well, ever since I got ill, I couldn't work. When I was first ill, I'd done the same old thing as most people do. Oh, why me? What have I done to deserve this? And then I just thought to myself, you know, come on, you can you can whinge about it. It's not going to get better. It's a progressive condition. It's going to get worse. If you carry on whinging, you carry on feeling sorry for yourself, it's going to get worse, and it's going to get worse a lot quicker. So do something. You can't do the things you used to do. Do the things you can do or adapt the things that you used to be able to do. You have to adapt them to how you're, you're feeling. And so that's what I did. I took up voluntary work. Wasn't that after um, uh, my stepdad, Charlie, died? No. Okay. I've done voluntary work for a long time. I've done age concern, from age concern to the witness service in Crown Court. I've done various um, voluntary work. And then I joined up with a thing called the Expert Patient, Patient Programme, or Educating Patients Programme. And it's a six-week course for people who are living with long, lifetime chronic conditions such as arthritis, anything, it could be anything. A lot of the people we get that come on these courses are, have got depression. And again, chronic conditions and illnesses can call, are well known to cause you, people to get depressed. So we have a lot of depression and anxiety issues and people come in and they go on a six week course, which is only two hours a week for six weeks. And we just give them the tools to help them manage manage their own condition really and tell them there are better things out there you know you can still live with a with a health condition you you can still yeah you can still function as a person you know it's not don't let everything be taken away from you and on week one they come in and you know when it is quite heavy on week one they're really down and they don't think this is going to help them this course and I say to them if you stay here till week six Apart from having I mean, some of my brilliant Welsh cakes that I make for them. Ooh, they are splendid. Cran- <laughs> cranberry. I bought you that stove, didn't I, to make them with, because I know how good they are. Ooh, we. And um, if you stay till week six, the difference in yourself and in how you will look at the world and how you will manage your condition will be amazing. So, um, yeah. And for me, to see the change from a person from week one to week six and to see them managing, some of them going back to work, some of them doing things they hadn't done for years and just the letters of thanks, the little gifts at the end. I mean, they, they're they not, you know, we don't, we're not there for gifts and things, but when they say thank you, you've changed my life and a lot of them become tutors themselves. Yeah, it's all worthwhile and it's good, it's good for me as a person. I just love to see the results and, and making people, you know, happier and Healthier, really. Mind and body. Body and mind. There we go. You can see where I got it from now. No, but um, that's that's it. Like, I mean, I've heard recently that, I think they've done some studies. I don't know how they work these studies out, but people who do voluntary work and work for free are actually um, extremely happy people because, uh, you know, giving and helping people and adding value to the world is very, very important. That's what I've come to learn recently, that actually... Um, when it comes to money, money doesn't really, I mean, everyone's different. Everyone has different drivers, but money doesn't really motivate me. It motivates me obviously, cause I need to earn money to, you know, have a lifestyle and, you know, to enjoy the life that I want to live. But it's not, it's not a massive motivator for me. What really motivates me is, is giving and, and helping people. Obviously I'm nowhere near on my mum's level or, or some other people. I'm still trying to develop that. But yeah, I just, um, yeah, I think it's, it's quite inspirational. Mum. so good work. Mm-hmm. Um, go on. And just to say that the mind and body uh, are so connected. If you, if you're feeling down, then eventually your body will follow, and you will get ill. If you're feeling down constantly, you will get ill one way or the other. If you start smiling at silly things, wake up in the morning, just look at yourself in the mirror. Even if you look a mess, even 
more reason to smile. Just smile at yourself. Embrace every day. Get up and smile and, you know, think positive thoughts. And eventually your body will react to it. A healthy mind, a healthy body, and vice versa. And people really don't seem to make that connection, you know. Um, you smile, you make other people smile. It's contagious. Okay, let me just say about, um, you were saying earlier about, so my sister and I, we have different fathers. Um, my Oops. sister, <laughs> Orcs. awkward. Um, nah, but my, uh, my sister's dad helped bring me up because my dad wasn't really on the scene and I became very close to him. He was more like a best friend really than a dad. And then he died back in 2004. And you were saying earlier, something switched in your mind in terms of positive outlook. Was it, you said it, it kind well, of, for the year that he died, I really can't remember too much about it. All I remember is that I had to try and keep the grief from you and Kirsty. And then I started thinking, well, Charlie would have loved to have been alive. He did love life, you know. And there's so many people out there that love living and have lost their lives. And I just thought, you know, it's a gift. It's a gift that we're alive and we should live it every day. I mean, if you, if you really don't want to live your life, then you are better off dead. But I think everyone's got a life to live. And, and it's just remembering that it's important. You know, we're, we're here once and let's just make the but most of it and let's just try and be as positive as we can. Things are always sent to try us and to make us, you know, struggle. And But we just we just need to be more more positive, really, and, and just yeah. realise how, how, how well off we are and be grateful for everything grateful, that we yeah. have got. Gratitude. Yeah, and also it's like, uh, well, I can't help but thinking, though, like it's been a bit blown out of proportion, you know, when, when people say, oh, just think positive, just be positive. I think, I feel like when I look at things on social media and stuff like that or whatever, I feel like it's there's a lot more to, you have to train your brain, right? That's yeah. what I've gathered. Yeah. yeah, so we'll go more into that now. You have to train your brain, right? So, like, I've started doing a bit of meditation and stuff like that, and over the last year or so, I've really, I really value um you know, training your brain and keeping your brain and your mind and your soul in good tact. So you have to practice and you have to put time into stuff like meditation, reading books, you know, getting enough sleep, um, managing your stress levels essentially. So I remember you were telling me about this ages ago on your courses, you, you teach a lot of this, yeah, Mum? So um, what is it like, because keeping a positive attitude, right? Yes, I agree with that. And, you know, trying to maintain positive, but, you know, the world is fucked up, right? Yeah. <laughs> the world's a pretty screwed up place. So it's not it's e- a lot easier said than done. Just just be positive, be positive. And you know, like I used to I used to actually watch the secret, that thing, you know, where they talk about um what's it, the law of attraction and all this kind of stuff. And I actually bought into it for a bit. But now what I you know, from from like kind of developing myself over the last couple of years, like really? Just just think positive and all these things are really gonna happen. I don't think I think there's more to it than that, you know. But obviously, keeping a positive attitude. You know, like say, for example, one of the things on the secret was, um, I think some guy, some guy was like paralyzed um, from this accident, and he was just thinking, thinking positive and keeping his mind, you know, strong when he was going through this, um, this, this, this tough time. And then, you know, he got better and stuff like that. Is the mind really that powerful, Mum? Do you think, like, really? Do you th- I, I mean, you know what I mean? Or is it getting? You see where I'm coming from? Yeah, it's not, no, it's not always easy. And God forbid anybody that loses a child or, or loses someone close to you, it's very, very, you know, it's the, the blackest of times for some people. And, you know, not everybody can think that way. And I'm sure, as hell, if I was one of them person who lost one of my kids, God forbid, then, you know, yeah, it would be very, very difficult to come back from that. But life goes on. And, you know, they're always going to be there in your heart and... You know, that's getting a bit deep. Though, uh, yeah, that's getting a bit going off a bit here. But anyway, um, what about, I'm talking about um, just, just the mind, uh, the mental side of it. You've got to just train tra- your Training mind. your brain, yeah, yeah. So, so just, if you train your body to, to look like you do, you have to train your mind to think. You know, stop being negative about yourself. Stop putting your desk up down all the time. Oh, you stupid thing, what did you do that for? That's right, and, and it, they've actually done studies on that, though, as well. Like, you know, like training the grey matter in your brain, whatever that is, is like certain parts of your brain which uh, activate serotonin, the happy chemical, or whatever. And they found people who meditate uh, consistently, they've done like um, CT scans uh, or brain scans, whatever, and they found that they actually have a higher 
a much higher dose of serotonin and happy chemicals in their brain because they've trained and activated certain parts of the brain, the gray matter. Whereas people who have high stress levels and don't actually put any practice into their um, minds, into their state of mind, have much lower levels of serotonin, higher levels of cortisol, the stress hormone and stuff. Really interesting. So, But some people as well, mind you, you've got to remember, some people, if they've got depression, anxiety, some people do need more help. Some people do need to go to the doctor. They, the most important thing is is to talk about it. So again, you know, that's an, an, an another issue altogether. I mean, but if you're just feeling down, um, miserable, negative, then you just you, you it is as simple as training your mind. How would, but it could what, take what tips would be more specific then? What 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 do you do? Because you've had this as long as twenty years. I wake years. up in the I've, morning. I witnessed the struggle. This is another reason why I wanted to get this podcast out there because you're not like. You because ju- you're used to it now, right? So you're just talking as if it's just yeah. it's life for you now, isn't it? But I've seen the struggle. I've witnessed what you've been you through. You saw me in hospital two hell. years ago when I I've wiped your ass in the hospital yeah. <laughs> yeah. numerous times. You almost die when you had that belly bag fitted. You know, it's it's been tough, um, and you, you've pulled for it, and you just continue to just live and smile or whatever. So just give them a bit some more specific. Like for example, when you got diagnosed with this illness, yeah, I that was to hit you for six. Yeah, why me? All yeah. them things, oh, feeling sorry for myself. Yeah. Why me? There's no cure. How long did it take you I to done? get through that, though? Because then you were going through a tough time in the relationship at the same time, yeah. weren't you? Oh, a long t- It took me a while. <coughs> a good few years. But I knew that I had... I knew that I had always been happy. I'd always been a, a happy person, a positive person. And I knew... I think deep down somewhere inside me, I knew that, you know, yeah, it's going to change my life. I just have to... I've got two beautiful kids. I've got to be a mum. You know, first and foremost, I've got to be a mum and I've got to be a happy mum. I can't see my, my kids can't see me crying all the time. And I mean, there was a time when Martin was coming home from school and I'd be so doped up on painkillers that I'd be, you know, dribbling from the mouth line on the settee and he'd come in, you know. Mm. And he got to the stage where, you know, I've got to do something. I've got to do something for myself because I'm not going to get better like this. I'm going to get worse a lot quicker. Mm. So, yeah, I just... I am grateful. For that. I've got two brilliant kids, and I'm just so grateful that. There we go. That's it, and that's why I, um, I've been practicing a lot is gratitude. Just, just running through ten things I'm grateful for every morning. Just writing them down, or just on my way to work, I'll just run through, you know, what I'm happy about, what I'm grateful for, what I'm excited about, what I enjoy doing. Uh, these Tony Robbins tricks, and it does help a lot. It's, it's emotional intensity that you need to put. You need to really put the emotions into it and you need to practice it day in, day out. You need to be consistent with it, just like I have been in the gym for the last, you know, 16 years. Uh, and I've built a body, a healthy body, and, you know, it's taken me places. So it all comes down to consistency and actually you've got to, you've got to apply yourself in life. You know, it's not going to be if, – if I know it's easy for me to say I'm a very fortunate individual, you know, I'm a healthy individual, whatever. Um, but, you know – there's so many people out there who just have that negative state of mind. They have that fixed mindset where it's like everything's against them and like moaning and whinging and um, hating on other people because they're doing well. So they want this. Should they live their life on like short term pleasures and like instant gratification? It makes them feel better when they say something shit about someone or they'll um, put someone down and people live their whole lives. In fact, I reckon most of the world, the westernized world, live, live their lives that way without being harsh, just from what I've uh, observed myself. But there's the people who don't, are the people I know is who really grow and um, have an impact on, on, on the world. So just having that positive outlook and, and training your brain. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask about tips. What specifically do you do? Like you, you teach courses on this, right? So what do you tell them when they come in depressed and they've got these illnesses or whatever? How, how do you get the message across them? We just teach them a symptom cycle. Like you've got to learn to break the symptom cycle at okay, some what, point. Can you remember any of that? I remember you used to um, write it down. Fatigue, depre- um, physical pain, um, difficult emotions, tiredness. Just all a big symptom cycle that goes around and around. You've got pain. You get fatigued, you get tired, you get a low mood, and it just goes around, and you've got to learn to break it at certain points, you know, and people break a lot of these symptoms by exercise, as it releases serotonin levels, endorphins, and, endorphins and makes you feel better, although at the time you're exercising, it doesn't always feel like, like that, but when you're finished, 
It does, and it gives you, and you're focusing on something at the time you're doing it. So it's taking your mind; it's a distraction. Let me just stop you there a minute. Exercise, yeah. You take the, you've got a dog, haven't you? Which has been a big game changer oh, for you, haven't it? Oh gosh, yeah. yeah. So um, the dog's how old now? Fifteen. She's fifteen, and she's been out twice a day, every day, for fifteen years. Exactly. Remember, you used to do the mountains, all that kind of stuff yeah. before you got really ill. Yeah. So that was your thing. It was exercise was a bit of a savior for you, really, and the dog. I mean, that companionship as well. And sometimes you don't feel the outdoors. Like, though. You like the outdoors, don't you? You wake up in the morning. It's freezing cold. It's raining. Yeah, in the UK, hey. that's the norm, by the way. In the UK, hey, the dog's still got to go out. So you just dress up accordingly. You make sure you're dry, you're warm. And you get out and you feel like crap sometimes when you're walking. It's miserable. And, and the, the gym as well. Obviously, I've trained my mum a few times, you know, but she can't grip onto any weights because of her hands. She can't, she can't do anything with weights. So we, we improvise a bit. My sister's also a trainer and we train her from time to time. Um, you notice like changes in your body and yeah. you felt better when you built Legs your strength up. And your strength. Mm, which is something you've got to pick back up now to get on because you yeah, were ill for a bit when you had to stop. Um, but yeah, so exercise. Um, you need to build your strength. Oh, yeah, let's talk about nutrition, right? So you have the TPN three times a week. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Here you know, my go. last my, my last bullet point here, guys, is um, nutrition and your addiction to sugar. <laughs> so we're all, <laughs> we're all addicted to sugar. I'm addicted to sugar. I, I don't care what, like, the majority of people on this planet are addicted to sugar. Um, but I kind of, normally, I'll have sugar which has nutrients in, but I'll still go overboard at least once a week. Um, I very rarely have processed foods, but I do occasionally. But for me, it's just a case of overeating calories every now and then because I'm addicted <coughs> to the taste of food. The um, go on, cough. Are you gonna sneeze? <coughs> oh, bless you. Um, yeah. So the uh, emotional, the emotional attachment is still there for me with food. Um, but yeah. So you know, mum, you can't really. I understand. So basically, she milks it, doesn't you, mum? Because you can't digest good food. She eats um, chocolate and sweets and all that every night. And I understand, you know, it's, it's fun to do that. It makes you feel good. We all know that, yeah? Um, you know, like the substance food kills more people than any other substance, right? Alcohol, all that kind of stuff. We all know there's an epidemic with people addicted. But <coughs> to be fair, you, you, you know, considering you have your illness, you, you're still burning. We had this discussion earlier. You're still burning more calories than what you're eating. That's great. But I don't buy into that camp, right? You know, burn more calories than you eat and you're going to be healthy. Bullshit. That's one kind. That's one fraction of um, of your long term health. Okay, what you put into your body is going to determine your yeah yeah the outcome. And you don't put great stuff in your body. I put my orange and my I put my green and my red juices in Matt. Yeah. Okay. She, okay. Earlier on, she had, she had a like. I, I'm not judging. That. It's fine. I understand you want to eat you, but I'm just saying like it just worries me a bit because I know what shit you're putting into your body and into your gut and how much long term damage you're doing with inflammation and all the rest of it and the lack of nutrients and whatnot. Um, so like earlier you had, you had that, that she had an ice lolly earlier and it was like watermelon flavor. you're like oh yeah it's a watermelon though isn't it <laughs> I, don't, I really thought it was now nah, but you are addicted to sugar right? just, just yeah of course cause, I cause am I want to make it relatable because we're all addicted I'm addicted to sugar I like honey in my tea I thought I'd stop taking sugar so I thought I'll have the healthier option it is the healthier option yeah, exactly. honey but um yeah but that's yeah. fine yeah, but you still have like sweets like yeah chocolate. yeah so what's and, your favorite sweet like, so it gets to light dairy milk no I know that as, uh, people got a little lost to me bag they Sometimes it can be runny, really runny, and if it's runny, you're losing all your nutrients straight away. And they advise you to eat. Oh gosh, they, I, must, I can't believe I'm saying this. They advise you to eat like marshmallows, wine gums, because it's got gelatin in and it stiffens it up again, so it thickens the substance that's coming out into your your elastomy bag. There we go. That's the end of that one. Anyway, anyway. sorry if you were eating. Um, no, nah, no. Nah. Anyway, I just wanted to delve a little bit into that. But, um, yeah, so what kind of, because I remember just one more thing now, folks. Um, I know Alfie, you're probably falling asleep, but uh, <laughs> I'm only joking. No, but um, the food that I used to eat, because I, I remember, like, we never really used to eat, like, fresh organic food. Like, you didn't have no. much money, did you? No. Like, we were quite poor. So I used to eat, but I'd always been fed. There's always food on the table, always a roof over my head. Um, but I used to eat, like, not the best foods, really. If you look back, it was, like, a lot of it was frozen, like, processed. But I'm a healthy individual, and... I was healthy when I was younger, right? But what did you used to feed me? Like, just whatever you could afford, isn't it, really? I tried to do a cooked dinner on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, if you were playing rugby and I'd be picking up you and all your mates, you'd opt for a McDonald's. Yeah, the McDonald's once a week. That was like a treat, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, well, it, it depended on what you wanted when you come home. And I did cook a few things from scratch, like spaghetti bolognese. Yeah, yeah, that. you used to have that, yeah. You used to like shepherd's pie with loads of cheese on top. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, and I mean, the turkey think, twizzlers and all the frozen food yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. That. 
That's it. But I've always, I always had loads of dairy and wheat, which I don't have anymore, right? Um, so I am a little bit intolerant to dairy. I don't have that anymore because I feel crap when I have it. And wheat, uh, I tend not to feel good when I have that, so I don't have that anymore. But I grew up eating like cereal all the time and uh, loads of full fat milk, which is better, by the way, folks. If you have full fat, don't have low fat. Um, so yeah, I used to have all that kind of stuff, and uh, I've turned out fine. So it just goes to show that the body will adapt to anything, isn't it? Really. So I'm like, just so they know, I haven't always been eating plates of veg, right? That's not like <laughs> something I've grew up eating. It's but something you do I've crave, my brain. yeah. Whereas I can crave a bag of sweets or a Cadbury's milk chocolate. And I think most women will relate to what I'm saying here about chocolate. It is definitely more a woman thing than a man thing. That's because yeah, they're weaker mentally, that's what it is. But <laughs> no, it's not really. Martin joking, craves, he craves for vegetables now. Now he's been eating them regular and he knows what goodness are going into his body. Whereas I, I'll crave a chocolate bar, he'll crave vegetables. There we go, and that's it. And I've got to that point, it's taken me a while to get there, but that is kind of... Um, Training like, your body. Training your body, yeah, and training the mind, though. That's where, that's where it's at, isn't it? When you're eating foods that our brains, as, as Sal said on the last podcast, yeah. our brains have been hijacked, though. So um, we don't really know what nutrients are anymore. We don't, our, body does, don't, our bodies don't crave nutrients because they don't, you, they're not palatable for you because you've been eating foods, for the most part, you've been chasing sugar. Most of us have been eating food which comes out of packets and we're hooked to having those kind of foods um, which are engineered to make you addicted. So to get me out of that, it's taken me a good few years. Um, but I just got to the point where you start feeling good. If you just give it a bit of consistency where you're eating, say, for example, uh, two servings of veg a day, do that consistently and watch how you feel. Before you know it, your body be crying out for vegetables. When you, it sounds silly. It sounds quite woo-woo. But when you get to that point, that is when it's a game changer moment then because your body's crying out for good foods. And forget about like, you know, obviously lifting weights and training properly is really important, but I am in the shape of my life without even thinking about it anymore. Training for me now is not even a priority. It's like I'll fit it into my lifestyle when I can because outside of the gym, I'm eating healthy foods most of the time because my body craves that and I know what my body needs because I've given it time. Uh, I've listened to my body for long enough to actually know what it needs. So that's that's what it comes down to, folks. Just give it a bit of consistency. Um, try making small changes. Like, for example, have two servings of veg a day. <clears throat> um, try and reduce or cut out processed foods. And drink, say, a little bit more water. Drink an extra litre or two of water a day. And then on top of that, maybe move more. Get yourself a Fitbit. My mum's got a Fitbit. Um, get yourself a Fitbit. And track how many steps you're doing. Right? Do those three things. Drink more water. Have two servings of veg a day. And move, trying to say 8,000 to 15,000 steps every day, guess what's going to happen? You're going to lose body fat, you're going to start feeling better, and then on top of that, when you start lifting weights, it's just game over. It's just that consistency, folks, right? Um, and just, if you want to get in shape, right, and you think, oh, I can't, I can't do what he does, I can't do what she does, because I know it's tough. You see these people on Instagram, and their, their physique is unrealistic. It looks unachievable. But most of the time, these people have been training for years and years. they got freaky genetics. Um, the worst thing you can do is compare yourself to other people, right? So comparisons are the thief of all joy. Remember that, right? So the second you start comparing yourself to others, it will rob you of your joy, rob you of your happiness. And it's very hard nowadays over social media. But just to put that one out there, just focus on your own game. Try and make those free changes that I mentioned. Um, and, yes, talking about lifting weights, my, uh, my, my Build Your Best Body program, training program, is live now. It's a nine-week plan. And you will build a significant amount of muscle. You will lose body fat. And it will completely help you. It will be completely transformative. Guaranteed. So um, there's still 50% off as well. So just um, click the link in my bio on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's at Martin Silver Fitness. But just click the link in my bio. Check out my blog, which explains what the program is. Scroll to the bottom. Click on it. Put, put the code in MS Founder. Yeah, MS, my initials, Founder. And you'll get 50% off. And that that will get you on the right tracks, trust me. And then I'm going to be um, I'm building this online stuff now, so I'm going to be having nutrition nutrition guides, all this kind of stuff coming soon as well. So stay tuned. Can I say one more thing? Crack on. About having a healthy mind. Read, learn. Knowledge is key to everything, and you you learn and you read. Read is relaxing. Reading makes you. Well, it educates you. Helps you grow, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly what I said in the last... This is the three things. It's funny you said that because gratitude, yeah, so what we were talking about with you, with your voluntary always work. Be fa- and giving. always be thankful for the good things in life, the little things yeah, that you've Little things. Like if someone smiles at you in the morning, 
I think it's lovely. It's smiling. very rare that happens. So how about you? Like I said, this on how about you smile at someone yeah. else? That is what I'll do. Like if, 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 for example, I had it the other day, I was walking home from work. I thought, oh, I haven't actually give anything today. So I thought oh, I'll just smile at this uh, person now when they walk by. And actually, it was a guy. It wasn't a woman. It was a guy, which is a bit <laughs> weird. But <laughs> one thing, one thing I, I think it was about a year ago, year and a half ago. Me and Martin, we went into a village called Witchage Village where I live in Cardiff. And I bought loads of them little kinder teddy bears, the, the gold ones. And I was giving them out randomly to people. I just thought, oh, you know, an old lady there or an old man there or someone who didn't. There we go. So happy. that's gratitude. So like, <laughs> no, I just, no, I just want to say though. So that that's it. The, the three G's, right? I think it's three G's. Yeah, gratitude. Just just being grateful for what you've got. The little things, like my mum just said. Yeah. Uh, and then once you said about learning, grow. That is something like I read. I'll try. I literally only read a few pages of a book each day because I don't really find the time. Uh, but I listen to an audio. I use Audible dot com, and I listen to one book a month. Um, and I just try and learn. You've got YouTube. You've got podcasts. You've got a world of knowledge in front of you. This plethora of knowledge flying at you, right? You have absolutely no excuse not to learn and grow. And trust me, growing, giving. Oh my God! What was the other one? Growing, giving, and how have I forgot that? What's the other? What's the other? Is there another G? No, gratitude is, is given, isn't it? Gratitude. No, that's different, isn't it? It's gratitude. gratitude is being grateful and thankful. Oh, sorry, they're different things, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Gratitude is being grateful, giving and growing. So those three Gs, yeah, stick to those, and um, it definitely is gonna, it's gonna completely, um, it's gonna help you evolve as a person, and yeah, just switch your mindset. Um, yeah. So I was just saying, Audible though. If you want to get, if you want to listen to books, just listen to them whilst you're walking around. Use the Audible.com. You get a book a month for like fifteen dollars. Um, podcasts, just trust me, guys and girls, get on it, and you'll never look back. Build your best body, though. Um, check it out. Click the link in my bio. And don't forget, if you can go to iTunes and give me a uh, five-star rating, please. No, but just, just give me a rating and a review. That would be a massive help. And if you have any questions or anything like that, drop me a, an email, martinsilver at hotmail.co.uk. Thanks for chiming in, man. I appreciate it. Oh, oh she's gone now, but anyway. She just walked off. Thanks for that. Rude. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for listening, and uh, stay tuned for episode 15.